in today's show, learning from experience, young crows head west. And nurturing tomorrow's stars, the Adelaide school that gets top marks. Hi, I'm Mark Bickley and welcome to the Optus Crows Show as we head into the Sandfall game against Norwood. But first, the newest face in the young wave refreshing the club. When Ronan O'Connor debuted last Sunday, he was the seventh Crows youngster to join the AFL this season. And he did it in Perth, where he grew up and starred as a junior. No doubt, a day to remember. Yeah, it was a great experience. Back at Optus Stadium, my home turf in front of the crowd I used to support growing up as a kid. Um, dream come true to get out with, get out there with the boys and play my first game of footy. So obviously, big congrats to, to Ronan. Enjoy building a career week by week. It's not just you know automatically going to happen, and you're a, a hundred game player. But just enjoy that challenge of um, of delivering good performance week by week and and building a great career. And I'm sure uh, I'm sure you have a good one. So well done. Yeah, I wasn't too worried. I just knew we had to play our way of footy um, and would be all right. The days leading into it, I wasn't too nervous, but morning of, um, yeah, woke up pretty nervous. But as soon as you get out there and get your first touch, they all kind of go away. So special. Um, family and my friends have been there in my whole life to support me and get me to where I was. Um, so to have them in the rooms to share that moment with me was pretty special. The Crows have got a really good young group coming through. Um, we all get along really good. Um, we're building a really good culture at the club um, and exciting times ahead. Joining Ronan on the trip to Perth were two other youngsters, Lockie Gallant and James Borlays. Because Sandfall players had the week off, the pair went along with the senior squad for a taste of what to expect at the elite level. Since we had a buy because of the SAWA state game, uh, the club thought it would be an awesome idea for the first years to come over and experience travelling um, with the AFL team and a good opportunity to get over to Perth and um, support the boys. Being able to partake in all the meetings and get a feel for what it's like in the lead up to the game just gives us that experience so hopefully one day when we play we'll, we'll know what it's all about. Getting to spend a uh, little bit more time with the older boys um, and see how they go about their, you know, preparation and recoveries. The importance of preparation, um, especially when you're travelling and you're on a plane, a long flight to Perth, just the importance of hydration and um, using your, your tools like your compression pants and stuff like that, just to ensure you're ready to go come game day. Just seeing how um, they bond together. Um, I think it really strengthens the, the culture of the club um, and uh, ultimately helps them play a bit better. So um, yeah, it's something to strive for, I think. So uh, it's been a good insight. So yeah, I've really enjoyed it. We heard there from 18-year-old James Borlays. And when we return, he gets up close and personal with Smithers. Welcome back. In an earlier show, we learned about James Borlase's sporting pedigree as the son of Port Adelaide Premiership player Daryl and Australian netballer Jenny. In this segment, delivered by Thomas Farms, it's time for James to chat with Brody Smith about his football journey. This week we're joined by James Borlase. Bozza, thanks for joining us. Cheers for having me on, Smithers. Um, how have you found your time at the club so far? No, it's been awesome. Um, all the senior boys have been uh, very welcoming. Um, good to meet. Um, some of the new uh, younger players as well. Anything that surprised you about the footy club or players in particular? The workload a little bit surprised me um, and dealing with that um, as well as you know the importance of preparation and recovery um, so that surprised me a little bit but yeah no, it's been good. Slept a lot in your first pre-season? Yep. <laughs> uh, as soon as I get home from training sometimes you have to go to sleep but 
No, it's been good. Anyone that's looked after you, I guess, or put you under your wing at um, the start of the year? Yeah, uh, Tom Duda has been really good. He's uh, taken me out for coffee, he's always checking in, um, and also been another uh, fellow defender, he's been really good, so. Yeah. Did he pay for your coffee? No, he didn't. No, that doesn't shock me. <laughs> did you pay for his? No, I didn't. Oh, good, <laughs> good. Give us uh, your background coming to the football club through the uh, NGA Academy. Because I was born in Egypt, um, I fall under the, the Crows NGA Academy and they were able to, able to pick me up um, as a rookie bee in the draft this, uh, this year, so I've been very lucky. Any nicknames for us that you've adap adopted from the club? or um, I've got Boz and Laser, <laughs> which has sort of just come around in the last couple of weeks. I have picked that up lately, so where is that from? I was just kicking set shots after training one time and one of the coaches, who's now our Sandful runner, um, just started calling me laser, I guess it comes from ball laser, ball, ball laser I guess, so um, yeah, some of the boys have just caught on to it. Laser leg. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> awesome, alright, thanks for joining us. No worries, cheers Smithers. James played school footy at Prince Alfred College alongside another Crows youngster, Luke Pedler. A couple of weeks ago, PAC were beaten by fierce rival Sacred Heart College, two schools with long traditions of producing AFL players. Sacred Heart, for example, has nearly 40 former students who have played at the elite level since the 80s. Names like Pavlich, Corns, Mackey, Hartlett, Porpletia, and more recently, James Rowe. So, what's behind their remarkable success? I think the system we have in, in place e encourages our young footballers to, to be the best they possibly can be. We have a real focus on trying to give them skills that will actually help them um, beyond their years at school. We don't do scholarships of, uh, at all in regards to, uh, to Sacred Heart and, and our football programs. We have a lot of, um, of sons of old scholars and, um, and our boarding house community and um, uh, a lot of local uh, kids living locally um, that are really keen on their footy. So Sacred Heart's got a well established football program and the kids are excited about being involved in that. Love, love school at uh, Sacred Heart, the border there and um, yeah, have some ripping mates and obviously the footy factory it is, it's, uh, I'm pretty, pretty proud to say I went to Sacred Heart. It's actually a really good competition, especially when I went through, we had a lot of close games. You still bump into boys back, or even still now, and, um, and have a laugh about the, the wins we got over them um, when we were younger. The most enjoyable thing is the brotherhood amongst the players, like, such a tight group of players and just yeah, I really enjoyed my football a lot out at Sacred Heart. Oh, look, I was really pleased with the way uh, we went about things here on Saturday. Our, um, uh, our skill level was, was as good as it's been for a couple of years. We, um, we had some aerial presence, which we haven't always had over the last year or two, and, uh, uh, and our fitness was great as well. We were able to run the games and the quarters out really strongly. We don't really knock off PSA too often, and to come out and smash them by 90 points was just an unreal feeling and because they were the they did win it last year so yeah it definitely gives us a lot of confidence. You know we've got a handful of lads who played year 12 last year and spending their 18th year in the Sandful competition this year that will be right in the mix to get drafted from last year's first 18 side. Um, you know I can think of four or five names straight off the bat from this year that'll, that'll be right in the mix as well. Look it's very exciting for the college but it's terrifically exciting for all the kids and even even those uh, in our group that don't get drafted um, get a real thrill out of seeing one of their teammates picked up and, and obviously following their career from there. It's definitely very inspiring to see players like Will Day go and play AFL and just makes you realise that it is doable and it just pushes you harder to, and what makes you want it more. Matthew Liptak is another Sacred Heart name that comes to mind. Now, in the Crow Show this year, we're featuring memorable comebacks and the 2002 semi-final against the Dees was something special. It turned into a shootout with Adelaide up by seven goals at quarter time. Binky, a right foot snap, and the Crows have got another one. Melbourne hit back, taking a 22 point lead into the last quarter. In a remarkable turnaround, the Crows then kicked six goals to one, with Brett Burton sealing the 12 point victory. Into the goal square almost, they're wrestling off the ball. Burton! Unfortunately, we went down to Collingwood in the prelim. Stay with us, still ahead. Players come and go, but people like Phil Harper stay and say yes when the club asks. Phil 
Harper is one of the most familiar faces at the Crows, filling a multitude of roles over more than 23 years. Recently, he's been one of the driving forces behind the club's dual premierships in the AFLW. Thanks to Optus, Sam Jacobs talks to Harps about the yes moments in his career. Hello Crows fans, I'm here with Head of Women's Football, Phil Harper. Harps, it started with yes for you when you came on board in January 1998. Um, obviously came on through a, a very exciting period. Yeah, well, uh, when I came to the club in January 98, we'd just finished winning the Premiership yep. in 1997, which was unbelievable. And then uh, to turn up in January 98 and to have another one nine months later was a pretty good time. Today we name the teams who will be part of the inaugural season of the AFL's National Women's Competition. Our CEO, Gillan McLaughlin, calls it a revolution, and it is. Andrew Fagan came to me in 2016 and said we wanted to put in a bid yep. uh, to, to have a team in the AFLW competition. I put that together uh, in conjunction with a girl called Caitlin Brady who first worked with us in the women's space. The teams that will compete in the inaugural AFL National Women's League are the Adelaide Crows. We were successful in getting the licence and I, th I remember we were told at that stage by the gurus of women's football uh, that we would be the second worst team in the competition. <laughs> so I said, oh that's good, who's going to be the worst? And they said GWS. I said, can we play them first so we can at least get a, a go at it? Yeah. And uh, and so we played them first and we won and I thought, oh well, beauty, we've yeah. got our one win for the yeah. year and that'll be good. Anyway, we won the whole bloody lot, yeah. which was amazing. What's your, I guess, your most proudest moment, or I guess the moment that gave you the most enjoyment? I mean, it's hard to go past premierships. So, uh, you know, in '98 was a, yeah, you know, was a proud moment. I'd only been here for five minutes, but it was still a, a great thing to be part of. And, I, and, and really, the premiership with the women's because. It, Sort of, I felt like it was my little baby and we'd put yep. it together and we were supposed to be the worst team or the second worst team in the competition. But we ended up winning, we ended up winning it and that was a pretty proud moment. Awesome Harp, thanks very much for having a chat to us and sharing your moment at the start of the yes. Thanks mate. No worries mate. Phil is universally loved around the club. Now remember that the best way to see a game at Adelaide Oval this season is with a Crows three game membership. Join the club now at afc.com.au. If you're already a member, we can't wait to see you at a game this year. But if you can't make it, please pass on your ticket to friends or family to ensure the Oval is at its capacity. Since 2008, Toyota has helped thousands of grassroots footy clubs raise over $7 million with the Toyota Good for Footy raffle. Clubs keep 100% of the proceeds to spend on upgrading facilities or new equipment, as well as Guernseys and balls. There are some amazing prizes to be won, including three brand new Toyotas. So make sure your club signs up at toyota.com.au. Let's check in with the Athelstan Footy Club on their success with the Toyota Good For Footy raffle. Hi, I'm Shane Hatchard, under 10s coach at Athelstan Footy Club. Athelstan Footy Club's been around for 117 years and it's a really important part of the local community. My name is Zach and I play for Athelstan Raggies under 10 grey. I like playing footy here because my dad played here and my brother and I like playing with my friends. My name's Jake, I play in the under 10 team for Athelstan Footy Club. It's fun, I like kicking goals, I like learning new skills and playing with my cousins and friends. In 2020, the Athelstan Football Club raised just over $9,000 in the Toyota Good For Footy raffle. Athelstan Footy Club's going through a full rebuild at the moment and we have eyed off a nice electronic scoreboard. So we're doing everything we can to raise as much money as possible and launch the footy club with a brand new scoreboard when it's all ready to go. It was really easy just to click through to the Toyota Good For Footy raffle pages Follow the prompts, no raffle tickets required. Yes, 
Support your local club by buying a $5 raffle ticket. Search Toyota Good For Footy Raffle. Okay, coming up next, the fan with a curly question for Matthew Nix. And when a draw was almost as good as a win. Oh yes it is! McGovern stunner! Loyal fans are at the heart of any club. And this year we've gone to social media to find members who can recall their favourite memories. This week, Diane takes us back to that unforgettable round 19 game against Collingwood in 2017. The Crows trailed by more than six goals at the main break before charging home in the second half. With seconds to go, we were still down by six points. Thanks to Bendigo Bank, we'll let Diane remind us what happened next. Crows have won the last four against the Pies, and we're away. My name's Diane Grierson. Um, officially, 2012, we become members, but always followed the club. 2017 game against Collingwood. Hubby and I having a, a footy weekend and went to see uh, Collingwood play the Crows at the MCG, and they were just playing abysmal up until the half time. Wills running on to it and this just tops off what's been a brilliant start for him and for his team. Half time, the boys come out and playing a completely different game. McKay fires at goal, it's gone all the way. Jenkins, it's good, can you believe it? They got within 17 points in that three quarter time. And they're still in it, they're still in it. They were coming back in that last quarter, six points down, seconds to go, the ball comes flying in. This is it! It was slow motion, the ball just comes sailing in. Oh yes it is! McGovern's done it! But he hasn't finished it! And we just sat there praying, everybody sitting. It was tense, people were holding their breath. The crows just go absolutely ballistic. Collingwood's fans are sitting there going, what the hell just happened? It is unbelievable what we are experiencing in this uh, game. We drew, but it felt like a win, you know. The Crow supporters were going ballistic that we'd actually pulled off a draw. There's lots of memories, ups and downs, always. Just one of those weekends that stands out in the mind that it was, it was, it was special. That was only the second draw in Crows history, the other being against St Kilda in 1994. Time now to find our Toyota Crow in the crowd. Faces here, faces there, let's settle on you. If you recognise yourself, email faceinthecrowd at afc.com.au with photo ID to claim your prize. And it's a great prize, two tickets to Toyota's exclusive Hilux Hill Unbreakable Zone at Adelaide Oval. Terms and conditions apply, so check out our website for details. Matthew Nix is generous with the Crow Show this year, agreeing to answer fans' questions. Today, Brad wants to know, if he looks back on his first year as senior coach, what would he have changed? Uh, Brad, as far as changing anything from 2020, not being able to train as a group is something as a, a new coach coming in, I would love to have had that opportunity. Uh, that would have helped us fast track our, our rebuild, uh, fast track our development of our younger group. Uh, and I feel we'd be a lot further ahead than what we are at the moment. But in saying that, it's always nice to, to know our group can push through challenges uh, and, and take themselves to, to another level. And I think we'll be in a better position over the coming years um, off the back of what we experienced in 2020. OK, we're just about out of time on the Optus Crows Show. Don't forget to keep an eye on at the Crows Show on Twitter for all the latest news and check out the club's social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for your company today and I look forward to joining you again at 3.30 next Sunday after the game against Richmond. Bye for now.